from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for August 14, 2017. I hope you had a great weekend, ready to get started trading this week. In today's video, I'm going to do a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading, and I'm going to highlight some of the key levels that we will look for entry and exit opportunities. And as always, be sure to use appropriate risk management strategies in all trade setups. As we get started here, we're looking at the USD CHF, the US dollar versus the Swiss franc. Looking at the daily time frame, it's actually been a bit confusing over the past uh, four or five days here for this currency pair because we were in clearly uh, a rising trend here along the blue trend line. It was moving up for a couple of weeks here, several days, moving up towards the 100 period moving average and into the mid to upper 9700s. Then suddenly we saw the drop off and it pushed all the way back down here into the 9600 level. Now today, with the market open here new this week on Monday, we now see it turn right back up again from the 9600 level. Now we're back into and challenging the 9700 level. So quite a confusing directional purpose here. Do we sell it? Do we buy it? So what we're looking for is the momentum. What is the current market doing? Well, right now, I would say it bounced off of 9600. We're pressuring back up in the direction of this previous movement of this trend. If you're looking for any inclination to buy this currency pair, go long US dollar, basically, we would look for that breakout above the blue shaded area. 96.75 is that blue zone. So you'd want to see it stay above there. And then your confidence increases that you're looking for it to challenge back higher. If by the day today or end of day today, we get back underneath the blue zone, it could be our clue that the buyers are exhausted and we begin looking for it to challenge right back down towards the pink shaded area once again uh, for the dollar franc. Now let's move on over to the euro dollar and see if there's anything different here. And really there isn't much different to speak about here on the euro dollar. What I'm going to do is see if we can draw out a little black box here and just put this box right about right here and note here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven trading days now. We've been bouncing around between one seventeen fifty bottom of the blue zone and one eighteen 50, 80, that's the top of the green shaded area. So we've been hot holding that as resistance even today uh, and Friday, holding that as resistance. We've been holding the blue zone as support. So for any, going to have any clue to a direction, is this going to turn back in the direction of the uptrend or is it going to turn into a downtrend? I think we need to see the breakout. It needs to either break out above the green shaded area in 118.80 to continue the uptrend or if we're looking for reversal, it needs to be back underneath the blue zone you know what the US dollar really playing a key role in all these currency pairs we're talking about today if it's stronger or weaker right now we see as we've seen on the dollar franc and the euro dollar we've seen a little bit of strength implied on the US dollar as the dollar franc went up the euro dollars making its way back down again today if that continues we're going to look for the breakdown of 117.50, the blue shaded area, and the turn lower. even zooming in a little bit doesn't really change it just gives us a little bit better viewpoint of that but right now, what I would point out is this is interesting is that we have a lower high. Let's just take a trend line here and put it like that, that uh, downward facing trend line. We now have a lower high. All it's going to do to give us confidence in further movement lower is make a lower low. So a break under the blue zone, 1750, we might even see a turn back down towards the black trend line and the yellow shaded area into the low 116s for the euro dollar this week. Moving over to the GBP USD, uh, this one uh, kind of contained within an area of congestion as well. We were in an uptrend. The red trend line shows us the uptrend. We saw the market break underneath that uptrend. We've seen it basically within a congestion zone here within that uh, fall or that breakout. Let's go ahead and zoom it in on that black box right here. One, two, three, four, five days now. It got inside underneath the purple zone and we've been just bouncing around in here. If we're going to go short in the direction of the trend line breakout, this breakout under the red trend line went down, congestion. If we're going to go short, there's two reasons to go short. In fact, last week we did this. We made some profit on shorts from the purple shaded area, the 1.3,000 level or so just above it. We went short there and from there twice last week, made profit back down to the green zone, protecting profit as it made its way back down into the mid 129s. I think we still have that opportunity today, uh, this week, maybe not today, since we've already fallen off of it for the day today, but we still have that opportunity to look for shorts into the purple zone or a breakdown 
underneath the green zone, which obviously hasn't done for several days now. So if we're looking to go short, purple zone, or under the green zone. Anybody is looking to go long, which would be against really this downward momentum we've had. But if you're looking to go long at all this week, the green zone, 129.65, becomes an opportunity. Or, obviously, the break back above the purple zone changes the directional purpose for the pair. Right now, I think everything's more likely pointing towards the short side for the pound dollar. More, moving on over to the dollar CAD. This one also been a little bit of a congestion zone, uh, an area of confusion. We have two different trends that we're looking at. Of course, the red trend line, the longer term downtrend, that's not too hard to see. And then in the past couple of weeks, we've seen a little bit of a rise along the black trend line down here at the very bottom. You've seen us risen into there. And we, for the past one, two, three, four, five, six days or so, we haven't seen a trend for six days. We've just been bouncing around. Let's do that again. Let's take this, zoom it in. Well, not hit the wrong button there there we go uh, zoom it in like this and I'm gonna take another black box and put it right here just like this and take a look there we go one two three four five six days just been holding in a holding pattern here between the pink and the yellow shaded area the black and the red trend line so if we're gonna buy let's talk about the direction it's currently been going in the ri the rise the rally the black trend line here if we're going to buy the black trend we're looking for that into the pink zone into 126.70 or above the yellow zone, which would be above 127.70. Those would be our scenarios for buying in the direction of the black trend line. If we're looking for a short and maybe another US dollar sell off, we would more likely be looking for that to occur at the yellow zone or under the pink zone. Of course, you're probably, if you haven't been in the Prodigy program trade room, you probably have confused about why these colored shaded areas are there. And I encourage you to join the trade room and we can discuss that further. But these are the areas that we'll be looking for. The pink zone, the yellow zone, break out either below or above. That gives us a trending direction. Until then, we're just going to be bouncing around between the pink and the yellow zone for the time being on the dollar CAD. Moving over to the US yen, look at this. A very interesting scenario here. For the dollar yen, we were, have been in a pretty clear downtrend. The blue trend line has been clearly moving lower. But look at this setup down here where we see the smaller red candle from last week, from Friday, with a longer wick on the bottom. And then suddenly we push back above the purple zone, 109.45. Not dissimilar from what happened back here on the left inside the blue circle where we tested below the purple zone and then suddenly reversed. Well, if that happens again, wouldn't that be interesting? Because then we could be even looking for it back up here into the 113s and 14s. Wouldn't that be interesting to see the return of the upside just like it has back in the past and go back up into the top of that long-term range or area back into the 114 level. Uh, we don't know if that'll happen yet, but we can watch for clues for that as we go along. Let's go ahead and zoom it in one more time. So I would say that so far we've had a false breakout underneath 109.20, 109.15. We might drop that down just a tad later on in the trade room, but as long as it's above this purple zone, I wouldn't be selling it. There's no reason to sell it as long as it's above 109.45. The only reason is to go short would be that it breaks once again back under the purple zone, maybe by the end of today's candle, or rallies back into the yellow zone. So if you're looking to go short, look at the yellow zone, 110.0, by the way, 110.0 is the yellow zone. Look at that as a possible opportunity to go short or back under the purple zone. If you're looking for a long and reversal scenario, I think down here, 120, 145, or sorry, 109.20, 109.45, the purple zone becomes our area to watch for a dip and a new rally here for the USD JPY. Moving on over to the AUD USD, the green trend line is really, I think, what we want to focus on uh, today. We are underneath the last low. Let me zoom in a little bit here, just like this. And I'm going to take this circle out here, widen it out a little bit, just like this. Uh, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six days finding support at the orange zone. And now for three days, we have found resistance under. The orange zone. So as long as it's under the orange zone, I don't think it's too difficult to see. We don't really want to focus on long. I think we want to focus on short under there, under these supports, under that 7895, 7900 level. We're going to focus short, which we did last week and even took some trades last week short on the Australian dollar. Your risk, of course, is that it breaks back above the orange zone. So if you're looking to sell this, uh, you want to be as close as possible to 79, probably not where we are now. Maybe it needs to bump its head back into the orange zone. And of course, you'll target back to the yellow zone if it does that. And your risk, of course, or if you're looking to go long, 
it needs to get back above 79, 79.30. The orange shaded area getting back above there, of course, sends your expectation back to the blue shaded area. So as long as it's under the orange zone, don't go long uh, until it breaks back above. More likely looking to go short AUD USD this week for the Australian dollar. Let's go ahead and move on over to the NZD USD. Not too much different, truthfully. We had the big blue trend line, the, the blue trend, the buying trend, and now we've been in a bearish trend along the black trend line. So if you're going to focus on a direction, right now the most recent direction has been bearish along the black trend line. Let's go ahead and zoom it in here a little bit on the New Zealand dollar. If you're looking to go short, though, this is not the time to do it. Obviously, the past two days found support on top of the orange zone, so don't go short right now. I'm not saying you should go long. I'm just saying it's not a good place to go short. If you're looking to go short or sell this currency pair, you'd probably prefer to do that closer to 73.30. The pink zone, obviously, one, two, three days have found resistance there. Or it needs to finally break through this price barrier, the orange shaded area, 72.65. And then more likely looking for it to head back down towards this green zone at the bottom of the chart, 72.30. So a breakdown of the orange zone, 72.65 or so maybe even 75, we look for it to target back down to the green zone in the direction of our current trend, which is the black trend. If we're going to look for reversal to go back up, we could look for that starting here into the 72.90 or so level, but I think even clearer about reversal would be the break back above the pink zone for the New Zealand dollar this week. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.